You must understand <coughs> the book, the statement in Hebrews 11.27. Hear me carefully. We, we say that Moses endured by seeing him who is invisible. That is not true. Moses did not endure because he saw him who was, in, who was invisible. Are you listening to me? It does not say Moses endured by seeing him who is invisible. It said Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. Now those of you who have logical minds are already ahead of me, and you know a little bit about where I'm going. But he said he endured as seeing. Now, not by seeing him. Now that's not... If, if, if Moses endured by seeing him who is invisible, that's not encouraging to me at all. Because I've never seen him who is invisible. So I can't endure. Moses must have, en- must have endured in some way where I can endure. For he was given as a model or pattern for me. The Bible says, Thou canst not, God says, Thou canst not see my face. Now that means that if, I, if Moses endure, if I endure by seeing him who is invisible, I cannot endure. Because the Bible says, no, thou canst not see my face. Again, the Bible says, no man has seen God at any time. Now that means, are you listening to me? That means that if I endure as seeing him as, by, by seeing him as invisible, that I cannot endure. Because the Bible says that no man has seen God at any time. Again, man shall not see my face and live, said Jehovah God. So that means if man has not, if man were to see God's face and live, that's not enduring. <clears throat> In fact, you wouldn't endure by seeing him who is invisible because you cannot see his face and live. Now, the word seeing here, and oh, this is so vital. The word seeing here is in the durative tense or um, uh, uh, action <clears throat> or the, the linear action which means Moses endured and endured and endured and endured and endured as seeing him was invisible. Well, Moses didn't see him. And there are only a half dozen places in the life of Moses where he came close to seeing him. He saw the burning bush while he was in the wilderness, but you won't find over a half a dozen places in the, in the 120-year life of Moses and in the 80-year ministry and preparation ministry of Moses, where he came anywhere close to seeing anything like the burning bush. So it says Moses endured and endured and endured and endured by seeing and seeing and seeing and seeing and seeing and seeing him who is invisible. <laughs> what he's saying here is Moses always endured because Moses always was seeing him, wake up choir, as seeing him who is invisible. Now, that means that Moses, whatever Moses did here, he always did it. So, uh, I'm saying it could not be he endured by seeing him was invisible. Not only that, I said a while ago, I've never seen him. Now, that means I can endure. Anybody here ever seen God? Raise your lying hand, would you please? Nobody here has ever seen God. <coughs> You've never seen him was invisible. Now, that means that you can't endure if Moses meant you in, that he endured uh, by seeing him was invisible. It does not say Moses endured by seeing him as invisible. Now, uh, only a few people ever got a glimpse of anything near seeing him. The Apostle Paul, when he was in Lystra, was caught up into the third heaven, but it doesn't say he saw God. It said he, he heard things unlawful to speak. It doesn't say he saw God. Stephen saw Jesus at the right hand of the Father, but says nothing about seeing the Father. <clears throat> and Stephen was one of the very few that ever got a glimpse of Jesus other than while he was here on earth. Uh, Joshua uh, saw the unseen captain, but if he's an unseen captain, you can't, he, 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 did, he, didn't, he didn't see God. So the truth is, Moses did not endure because he saw him as invisible. I've got a sermon on this I'm going to have to throw away. I've heard sermons. You're not going to make it unless you see him as invisible. Then you're not going to make it. <laughs> now then, that isn't all. Uh, uh, Joshua, I mentioned the Hebrew children. There was one like unto the Son of God in the fire furnace, but that was not Jehovah God. Maybe Isaiah, he said, I saw the Lord high and holy. I think he saw a pre-existent uh, image of Christ, but did not see God the Father. Not over a half a dozen men in all the Bible, or people in all the Bible, got any kind of a glimpse of, of heaven or Jesus while they're on earth. I'm trying to tell you, folks, that that's not what it means. It does not mean if you keep seeing him as invisible, you can endure. 
No, Moses, the Bible says, Moses endured not by seeing he was invisible, but as seeing him was invisible. <coughs> now, if, if it's by, it's discouraging. Now, how did Moses endure the desert for, for uh, backside the desert for 40 years? How did Moses endure the struggles with Pharaoh? How did Moses endure the deliverance from Egypt by the Passover land? How did Moses endure the crossing of the Red Sea? How did Moses endure the 40 years with the rebellious Israelites in the wilderness? How did Moses endure the rebellion of Korah? How did Moses endure the fiery serpents? How did Moses endure all of leading two or three million Jews without houses, without kitchens, without bathrooms, uh, and living in tents for 40 years? How did Moses endure? By seeing him? No, as seeing him. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying Moses endured as if he could see him who was invisible. Now, I can do that. I can endure as if I could. That means I'm supposed to preach as if Jesus were sitting out on the front row hearing me preach. Now, he's not, but as if he were. That means that my life is supposed to be lived as if it were being viewed by him who is invisible. That encourages me, because I've never seen God. I've never seen the third heaven. I've never even seen Jesus standing at the right hand of God. I've never gotten a vision. Neither has Earl Roberts. <clears throat> I've got, I'll come nearer than he will. But, uh, no, he hadn't gotten a vision, and I haven't gotten a vision. But praise God for these six to eight years of life, almost six to nine, somehow I've endured. And for these almost 48 years of pastoring Baptist churches, somehow I've endured. You say, Brother House, how have you endured? I haven't seen him on time. I've endured just like Moses endured. I have lived with the awareness that everything I do, Jesus is there. And just as if I could see Jesus, that's what's caused me to endure. For example, temptation. You know the best way in the world to overcome temptation? Live as if you were seeing him as invisible. Next time you truck drivers over here tempted to take a drink, look and see Jesus sitting beside you there at the bar. Not, not the truck driver would drink. I never knew a truck driver that drank. But, but I'm just supposing that. But next time you base section of the choir uh, are tempted to... But anyway, I, I, I'm saying, you want to quit smoking? Uh, you can quit as seeing him was invisible. You don't want to quit cussing? You can quit cussing as seeing him was invisible. If you were out cussing like a sailor, if you were out cussing somewhere and all of a sudden you got a vision of, of, of Jesus, you'd quit cussing. Now Moses said, the way I took it was I lived as if I were seeing him who is invisible. Uh, for example, I travel a lot. It's amazing. Over 8 million miles of travel. Over 3,000 hotels and motels I've stayed in. And this is a very sensitive subject here, but it's a good illustration. I have only been approached twice by prostitutes in all these years. I've stayed in big hotels, little hotels, dinky motels, name it, I've stayed in it. Both times, let me tell you how I handled it. I was in Memphis, Tennessee. The pastor told me there's a certain house that is right next door to the hotel where a bunch of prostitutes live. Well, I didn't get outside my room at night except to go preach. <laughs> but in the afternoon, I like to take a walk. I went out. I took a walk. I got down about a block past the motel, and a prostitute came up. He said, How you know, I'll tell you what she said. She said, uh, Mister, she said, I bet you are very lonely and bored being alone. Would you like to have some company? And I said, I'm not alone. <clears throat> I mean, she jumped a foot. She looked around. I said, no, I'm not alone. She said, who's with you? I said, Jesus. Man, she took off running. Yeah. How did I endure? As if I were seeing him who is invisible. Now, if you could look up and see his face every time you're tempted, that'd be okay. But you can't do that. I'll tell you what you can do. 
you can realize he's there because he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And he's there so you can endure and you can overcome temptation and overcome your liquor and overcome your soap operas and overcome your dirty rock music and overcome your smoking and overcome your drinking and overcome your morality if you live your life as if you were seeing him who is invisible. I fought some battles. You know how I fought him? As seeing he was invisible. I, <clears throat> I'm fighting a battle. Okay, okay. I used to play semi-professional softball. In fact, I played a lot of sports, and, and I used to have girlfriends. Now, boy, if my girlfriend was in the stands, I did my best. I wanted her to see what a good softball pitcher I was back in the days when men played men softball. But I, I'd look up the stands, and there she'd be, and then I'd go with it then. Brother, you listen to me. You can face any battle you've got to face if you will look and stop and do it as if you were seeing him who's invisible. And by the way, he's just as much there as if you could see him. And the reason you can't see him is because you don't have the right kind of eyes that can see that which is invisible, but he's there. And when you fight the battle, fight the battle realizing that the eyes of Jesus are on you. And take it, and take it, and keep on going, and don't turn back, and don't quit, and don't turn aside as if you were seeing him who is invisible. That's what I do when I pray. I pray as seeing him who is invisible. I don't pray scatter shot up in the sky somewhere. I pray as if Jesus were there. I talk to him. I used to travel a lot with Dr. John Rice. <clears throat> and I've heard Dr. Rice sit in the back seat of a car talking to Jesus just like he'd talk to me, and I'd know who he's talking to. <laughs> First time I ever did, thought he was joking. We joked a lot. He said, oh, bless me. I put, I put my hand on his head and I said, bless you. But he didn't think it was very funny. Just like you didn't. <clears throat> but I'm saying, that God was as real. Listen, God was as real to John R. Rice as if John R. Rice could see him. Moses said, I'll tell you how I took 40 years on the back side of the desert. It was as if I could see him who was there. Not as if he was there because he was there. But as if I could see him. Yeah, here's how I took walking to, to Ferio and saying, let my people go. I did it as if I were seeing him who is invisible. Ladies and gentlemen, not only should you live realizing he sees you, but you, could, you, should, you should live realizing as if you were seeing him. Mrs. Billy Sunday told me that Billy Sunday was that way. He had talked to God a while, talked to him all a while. She said, I never knew he was talking to me or to God unless he was bawling somebody out. I knew it was to me then. But Ma Sunday said, we were driving down the street. And Billy talked to me a while, talked to God a while. She said, God was as real to my husband as I was. Now, that's the way you can endure. And by the way, that's why you're living in sin. That's why you go to your dirty rock concerts. That's why you watch Oprah, Donahue. Stupid Hugh and all the rest of them. That's why you say your dirty words. That's why you drink your beer. That's why you smoke your cigarettes. I'll tell you why. You don't realize he's there, but he is there. He shall never leave thee nor forsake thee. Time and time again in the Bible, he says he's there. Okay, live as if you could see him. That's the secret. I read the Bible that way. I never read the Bible alone. I read it with him. And I'll sit down and read the Bible, and we're reading it together. And I'll say, <clears throat> by the way, he always sits beside me. I'll say, dear Lord, show me some things in the Bible I haven't noticed yet. That's exactly how I got this thing this morning. I sat down to read this book. I looked over to God, and I said, dear God, show me some things I haven't seen in this book. I was reading Hebrews chapter 11. I came to that word and said, by seeing him as, as seeing him as little, I'd always thought it meant by. 
And they'd always discourage me. I never have seen him. How can I endure? And I noticed it says as, not my. As. You know how I got it? I, and that's why the Bible is so dead to you. You don't read it as seeing him was invisible. You sit down and read that book and pay attention to it and quit, quit getting your mind everything else in the world and take it more, a little less like you take a dose of castor oil and sit down read that Bible and look over to God and say, Dear God, I, I'm, I'm reading this Bible as if I could see you. Now you're here. You teach me that Bible and you read it carefully. I'll guarantee you that old book will become a new book to you. As if I were seeing him who is invisible. When I preach, I preach as if I were seeing him. I sit on the platform across America. Can I sit here? This seat taken. I sit on platforms across America. And while I'm waiting to preach, I look out in the audience and picture seeing him who's invisible. And boy, I say, <laughs> I better do my best tonight. Because he's there. And I picture seeing him and brother, I picture the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the God of all the universe and the great Creator. And that's why a bunch of preachers are dead and dry because they don't realize that God is there. I'm saying, here people say, Little House, why do you get so excited while you preach? Because God is here. That's why. And I preach as if I were seeing Him who's invisible. When I hurt, when I hurt, I see Him who comforts me. I promise you, and I've said this many times, I promise you that 50 times to 100 times a day, I will say to God, I love you. I will sit at a table somewhere by myself in a restaurant while I'm traveling, preaching somewhere. I'll sit at my table while I'm eating a meal, and I'll eat a bite or two and say, I love you. I talk to him just like I would talk to somebody else on a trip with me. And I'll promise you this. I say more words out loud with this mouth to him who is invisible than I say to any human being in this world. That's how I take it. You say, Brother Hines, if I had to go through what so-and-so is going through, I couldn't take it. I know you couldn't because you don't do your life as if seeing him was invisible. But you could take it. Moses could. Good night, look what he took. Forty years alone on the backside of the desert. Forty years being a bunch of Jews in the wilderness. Pharaoh's battle with Pharaoh crossing the Red Sea. How do you take it? The same way you can take it if you live your life as if you can see him. I talk to him out loud. I tell him funny stories. I told him a story last night that I told my son's good class this morning. You want to hear it? You're going to get it. Where are we going to turn off? Bill Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Jesse Jackson. Jane Fonda on an airplane. It went down. Guess who was saved? America. <laughs> I told that to God last night. He said he'd already heard it. I told it to him. I was in the car on the way home. And we laughed together. A deacon told me after the service last night. And I, and I thought that was hilarious. And I thought, what a wonderful thing. But anyway, I told it to God last night. Oh, you said with the house. I'd rather tell it to somebody. I told it to the big somebody. I decided years ago that I wasn't going to do anything I couldn't include Jesus in. You'd be shocked at things I won't do that you do. And places I won't go that you go. Because I see him who's invisible there. Moses endured. How did he endure? Well, he endured for going down to the doctor and getting some pep pills. How did he endure? Went to psychologists for psych psych psychiatrists for psychiatric treatment. How did he endure? By a, bit, by a more rounded, better rounded diet. I saw a little cartoon yesterday, or this morning maybe, said um, a woman was saying to her big fat husband, said, if the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you're building an annex. <laughs> Won't you laugh one time in your life? 
I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, that you are not going to make it trusting yourself. You're not going to make it trusting your medicine. You're not going to make it trusting your diet. You are not going to finish this obstacle course unless you live as if you were looking in the face of Almighty God. As I walk the floor in a battle, I talk with him. I don't mean just talk to him I, as if I were seeing him, I talk to him. I point things out to him. I tell him I love him. If I see something pretty, I say, look at there. You saw Brother Hiles. He's already seen it. Yeah, I've already seen a lot of things too, but I might miss it the next time I'm there. I talk to him. The truth, truth is, most of us don't believe in God. You're an atheist from here up, and a, I mean, a Christian from here up, an atheist from here down. Listen carefully. I don't care what your obstacle is. I don't care what your burden is. I don't care what your heartache is. You can endure it. But you can't endure it because you're tough. Preacher was introducing me to preach not long ago and he said, I want you to meet Dr. Jack Howe the toughest man in the world. May be true. I don't know. But if I am the toughest man in the world, toughest man in the world can't endure his life by himself. I have not endured what I can do because I'm tough. And you won't endure what you have to face because you're tough. And you won't do it because you can take it. You'll do it the same way Moses did. The greatest Christian probably, the greatest man who ever lived. The only way Moses could endure was as if he were looking in the face of him who is invisible. Hey, Mrs. Evans, that's the way you can endure. That's the way you can endure your cancer. As if you were looking in the face of him who's invisible. Hey, Tim and Betty McCurdy, that's the way you can take that little boy who looks around but can't respond. A state of just never says a thing, just looks around for over a year. That's the way you can take it. As if you were seeing him who is invisible. Hey, John and I'm just saying this is Mitchell. That's the way you can take it. As if you were seeing him who is invisible. Hey, dear widow, living alone, children all reared, lonely, miss your husband, empty place in the bed beside you, empty place at the table. You, you're lonely. That's the way you can take it. As in as seeing him who is invisible. Hey, lady, forsaken by your husband, rearing your children by yourself. Have to be a mother and a father. Hard time making ends meet. I'll tell you. He said, I just can't take it anymore. You can't take it anymore unless you decide to live as if you were looking in the face of him who is invisible. Hey, cancer patient. Hey, bereaved one. Hey, mom and dad who has a little body out in baby land in the cemetery. Hey, broken hearted one. Hey, bereaved one. Hey, ill one. Hey, divorced one. Your husband left you, your wife left you, and you didn't want it that way. Hey, I can tell you how you can endure. See, I'm not as tough as she is. She didn't endure because she was tough. She endured because she endured as seeing him who was invisible. It's been hundreds of years since it happened. Several hundred, in fact, a couple, two, three thousand years since it happened when the verse was written. I look back at Moses' life. Nobody ever lived a life with all the suffering Moses had. Even in his infancy, placed in an ark of bulrushes. In the Nile River. From that moment to the moment he was buried on Mount Nebo, Moses lived a life of heartache and battle and suffering and sorrow. One hundred twenty years! Moses, how did you take it? He didn't say, I took it because every once in a while I saw him who was invisible. If he's invisible, he couldn't have seen him. No, he said, I can take it because everything I did... I did it as if I were looking in the face of my God. 
Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me and I'm through. If you don't listen, I'm preaching another hour and a half. Listen to me and I'm through. I said when I started, life's an obstacle course. If you haven't come to the first obstacle, that doesn't mean it's not there. If you haven't come to the first heartache, heartbreak, that doesn't mean it's not between you and your death. Life is one big obstacle course. And some of you are going to wash out. And some are going to quit. And some are going to turn back. And some of you are going to keep on going. Boy, the apostle wrote that scripture. He said, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. Now he said, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. whom the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me. And, it, and he says, looking unto Jesus. In fact, I used the wrong scripture there. But looking unto Jesus. Have I made it these almost six to nine years? I don't look at the battle. I look at as if he were there. Looking, didn't say looking at Jesus, looking unto Jesus. As if he were there. Heartaches, I think I can see him. Battles, I think I can see him. Heartbreak, I think I can see him. Moses, how'd you take it? As if I were looking at him who is invisible. Brother Hiles, how do you take it? As if I were looking at him who is invisible. And that is not only a way to take it, it is the only way you're going to finish this obstacle course. And Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. If I preach this morning on Moses endured by seeing him as visible, you could try and try and try. You could look and look and look, get you some thicker glasses and get you binoculars and get you a telescope. Wouldn't help you a bit. You couldn't see him. But if I preach this morning on you can endure as seeing him as invisible, everybody in this room can start praying as you were, as if you were seeing Jesus. Everybody in this room can start reading your Bible as you were seeing, as if you were seeing Jesus. Everybody in this room can face temptation with the awareness that you, as if Jesus were there. That's the way you'll endure if you do. Our Heavenly Father, I love this truth. 